gorgeous and vicious. It's my favorite combination. This is me. I love the way she held herself, the way she spoke. So, let's begin. She thinks differently than people around her. You hope for that kind of challenge as an actor. To give up work, toe the domestic line, we are forced into these gingerbread shapes. God, it's all so depressing. The Baroness, she's not one of those people. If I cared about anyone or thing, I might have died like so many brilliant women with a drawer full of unseen genius. It's just this embarrassment of riches. We're dealing with a villain, so you have a little more freedom that way. You could possibly step into those shoes, the brilliant Emma Stone and the singular Emma Thompson. We have a battle of the two Emmas. with Disney back in 2015. They were just sort of playing around with the idea of an origin story of Cruella de Vil. And because it doesn't exist, there was a lot to sort of figure out and discover and see if it made sense to tell a story about her in that way. But the character is so much fun and so kind of intoxicating that I think they had an interest in finding, you know, what that story could be. It was a really long time coming, and it's pretty surreal that it finally did happen, because after four years of, like, is it gonna come together? Here we are. So Stella can't go to the ball. But I know someone who can. I think people's idea of Cruella is that she is this mean, unhinged woman and she treats animals poorly and things like that. But I think what they maybe didn't expect was seeing the human side of her. Cruella is such a fascinating character because she's so arch and interesting. It wasn't what I was expecting, but it's way cooler than anything I was expecting. Emma Stone is a revelation. The original Cruella that Dodie Smith wrote the book about, the original character was based on Tallulah Bankhead. Emma just embraced that sort of sassy, quick-witted, like that on a dime. Do you understand? Why don't we create some buzz for this old rag that you continually fill with that old hag? <laughs> watched a lot of Tallulah Bankhead and worked with the movement coach on a lot of her mannerisms. She was definitely the biggest source of inspiration because she was what they based the original cartoon sound and movement on, and she's just so fabulous and does not care at all when anybody thinks of her, and that is Cruella in a nutshell. It makes perfect sense to take a sort of oddball, dark character like Cruella de Vil and give her a film, change it up and do something new and evolved and interesting. There is an element to looking at a villain or what makes a villain and how people can be affected by the events that have happened in their lives or how they can crumble underneath the weight of something or rise up above it and not always take it to the best or most moralistic place. It's kind of talking about all of those things but in this kind of fun Disney, over the top, you know, crazy way. Check, check. I'm not quite sure about the death though. It will be you. Mm, I'll get my coat. If it's going to be Emma Stone, then you're going to have to have an actress who's her equal in large measure. There's only one actress in our mind. That's me. And that was Emma Thompson. So it's one little step. One little step. Up and one little step. And I would get exactly onto that mark, my darling. Thank you. I heard about it, and my agent asked me to talk to Craig. Gillespie, and I'd seen I, Tonya, which I absolutely adored, and I loved talking to Craig. And then my agent, I believe, threatened to have him hurt oh. uh, if he didn't give me the job. When I first read it, that's what jumped out at me. It was, um, ooh, Bechtel test, big tick. Two leads are women who are working and who are adversaries in their work, and you don't see that very often, if at all. I love the whole premise of the story and the scenes with the two of them together. And that's something that was so exciting for me. Tony McNamara came up with a device that she has to go undercover. We could really have a lot more screen time with the two Emmas together. And that's really the most fun. I need 10 pieces that work by 3 a.m. The Baroness is the reason for Cruella, unfortunately. And that's sad, but it's a wonderful idea to see why someone becomes what they become. No one is interested in what you write, my dear. Just in how I look.
When someone who is genuinely lovely and incredibly sweet and giving in real life plays a mean character, you can have so much more fun with it because it's so far removed from who they are. Sometimes like before takes, we'll be like chatting or talking or whatever, and then she turns into this character. But the moment it was done, sort of giggling about it after. <laughs> I think Emma Thompson is, since I've been like knowingly wanting to be an actor, she's like, so untouchable, really. Yeah, that was, that was, that was, I think if you maybe take a beat. So look at it first. Look at it. Say, Very good. Very good, yes. I was in Scotland when I was preparing. I would meet Jenny Bevan, the costume designer, and Naomi Dunn, my hair and makeup designer. And we would do fittings and try shapes. And during that process, I slowly started to get a sniff of her. We sort of channeled the old screen divas, Joan Crawford, Elizabeth Taylor to Audrey Hepburn, to all the looks, insane hairdos. And costume designs are just extraordinary. It's a three-woman team to create the Baroness. Take a moment to revel in it. Well, that's enough. <laughs> Baroness is a piece of work. She's incredible to act with because A, she's Emma Thompson, but B, the character is just so hilarious and so cruel. In a strange way, this is like a side of her that I hadn't seen before. I wouldn't say a surprise because she's such a brilliant actress, but to see another thing in her arsenal that I wasn't familiar with was just a delight to like see this character come to life and just grow and really be a scene still. How do I look? Fabulous. Well, I know that. Trimmy? It's about the making of Corella, but she really is the, the OG. I think you're something. Of course, for Cruella, the Baroness is a kind of dream. She's the figure behind this extraordinary house of fashion. So when she sees her, she's overwhelmed by her and dazzled by her, but it doesn't take long before she understands quite who she's dealing with. Here's to me. <laughs> It was quite hard for me to have any friction with Em Stone because we're such good friends and she's my favorite young American. I just feel very lucky and we can create the friction because we're both very good actors. It's just our job. 1965 collection. Oh, no wonder I love it, it's mine. It was very fun to explore that stuff with Emma. And because she sort of stays at that crescendo throughout, it also was amazing for me to lightly study without it being two of the same person, for me to try to infuse little bits of her nature into the nature of Cruella. What drives her is not wanting ever to come second and not wanting ever to share the limelight with anybody else. Playing the two sides of Cruella, Estella and Cruella. It's been really interesting to kind of gauge the tone and how different they are. It's one thing to read it on the page, but it's another to really try to do it day in and day out. But I think it's kind of fantastic because it's the personification of those two sides of her hair. You know, there's kind of like the dark and the light. But one of the great things about Estella, the original Cruella, is written is that she's not like this pure, sweet, unattainably perfect creature. She's full of vim and vigor and she's feisty and smart and is a con artist. All right, we should put on some music or something. Lighten the mood. We did this like photo session day very early on and it was like a test footage shoot with the full Cruella garb in black and white. And she looks so cool and she holds herself with such confidence. Disney went on to show that test photo at the Disney Expo, and suddenly that one image just ignited the entire internet where people got so excited for this movie. Cruella gets things done. Stella does not. There's always the question of like how cognizant is she of her actions? Is this a show or is this who she's become? Where she's playing Cruella, but then where does she become Cruella? That was so intense. And she does an amazing job with playing with those facets until she finds her true self within there somewhere. She's got great evil character to get her teeth into. And she plays it with this combination of real charm and seductive wickedness. It's just delicious to watch. Did I? Uh... It really is a story on nature versus nurture, too. She was nurtured one way, and her nature 
may be different. I see it as her coming to terms with her nature, because as we know, Cruella de Vil is pretty villainous. And we understand at the end of this film that she's accepting it rather than fighting it. Anyway, mustache. Much to avenge, revenge, and destroy.